I really enjoyed watching the the transformations toward the very end. Once I, I think it's once I take his jaw off, <laughs> then it's not Jeff in there anymore. At that point in time, uh, transformations were big in films. I can't remember what stuff was going on, but it was after the werewolf movies uh, that uh, Rick Baker and Rob Boutin had worked on, uh, Altered States, and they'd all used bladders for uh, that Dick Smith came up with, basically, uh, for the transformation effects for having things grow and all this stuff. And uh, I brought this point up to David early on, going, "It's to, you know, it's, we got a transformation movie here. I really like to avoid that." technique because it's just been seen too much. I mean, it had been talked about, written up, you know, you, Good Morning America had it on, you know, it's like, okay, the housewives know about the technique, we got to do something else. That was grueling. I think those last few minutes from when his uh, jaw comes off till, till the end took like a couple of weeks to, to shoot, especially when you have an animatronic thing, it's, it takes a long time to set everything up. Strong arm. Yeah. Rip that the sucker. Opposite way. His head's got to go up more. Keep your head back, Gina. Yeah. More straight arm. Stiffer elbow. Gina, I told you to work out, goddammit. Okay, rip that sucker off. Get mad. Pull, pull, pull. Keep going. 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 Cut. <laughs> and I was crying through the whole thing. So I had to basically cry for like two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, my eyes were all just puffed up permanently, you know, swelling. Say something. Go on camera, dude. Right? <laughs> Very nice. Gina, Gina, this is see. serious business, Gina. Yeah, I mean, Gina, you're supposed to keep back until we say cut, aren't you? No. <laughs> Ready? And action. No, no, I won't. No, no, I can't. So what we had to do for the transformation was have something that would happen in a revealing way rather than a, a, a distorting way and a, and a forming way. So uh, we went with the analogy of the insect and saying, okay, well, you know, they start from whatever the eggs and the pupa and all this stuff. So his skin is sort of, we took the attitude that his, his skin has become this useless shell for him. And so when the shell's done, he just breaks loose. Ready and two. They were fairly simple effects, but there were a lot of them and a lot of different ones. So the transformation, as quick as it is on film, wound up being very complicated in terms of the number of gags and rigs we had to do for it. The actual head split was was a real challenge and a real tough one. It was because we had to somehow make it look like something that was bigger actually fit into something smaller. Because Space Bug's head was probably about that size, and Jeff Goldblum's head is probably about that size. Okay, eyes. Three, two, one. Action. Okay, ready? Oh, I really like that. that good. Ooh, let's uh, cut. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Kelly Lepkowski who did the mechanism for that, which was basically several plates that compressed like this. So we have the space bug face on there, the brundle face on top of that, so that as we released these heavy springs inside, it would actually literally push the face skin off, and, and as well as expanding the head, so that when at the end of the shot, we actually wound up with something that looked like the space bug, rather than just something that pushed the face off. Eyes, skins... Uh, 
Come on, baby, you can do it. Uh, get that. Baby. Gina, oh, grab it. Baby. Pull it out, Gina. Come on, Gina. Go. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Now. <laughs> now act. Okay. Now let his head. No, seriously. So I'm serious. Yeah. And Gina, uh, let his head go back the other way, the funny way. You know. Flat. Retract okay. it. Yeah. Retract, retract it. it. Gina, act. Hey, Howie, seriously. Follow me. Okay, wait a sec. Uh, Gina, can you push on his little feelers? Uh, right, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. There we go. Push his feelers in. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Just hang on. All right, now pay attention to David. Okay. Okay, that's it, okay. Chris. Serious? This is serious. Okay. Okay, you got to get rid of that s a piece of uh, snot there. Good. Okay, thank you, Gina. And uh, action the head. Okay. There you go. Gina, oh. you're horrified. Ooh, yeah. ooh. Yeah. And yeah. now yeah. his eyes open. And then wait. Ah, and we cut. What I'm happened? Sure did. We ran yeah, just no. before you said cut. Uh, so <laughs> I said cut because I heard you say how oh, far. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we all did it perfectly. The nature of the piece is that everything is so interweaved together. It's, everything has to flow from one sequence to the other, from one design step to the next, that Every, even all the little stuff was still a major consideration because it had to fit in really tightly. It wasn't just like, okay, there's a monster here, you know, great, we can do a monster. It was like, and, the, and then that monster has to look like it came from this monster and it's going to that monster, you know, like, okay. And then it also has to be able to do this and this and still be recognizable as the actor who needs to perform in it. I said, oh, okay. And that went on through the course of the entire production. So you're going to get a fucking nasty shock if you keep fucking with that. Hold on. Hang on, just need video. And one, two, three, four, five, and down. The space bug was actually a series of puppets. Um, one thing you have to realize about the space bug is in most puppets you're dealing with a, a fairly symmetrical character. So you can uh, work slave systems to be pretty one-to-one. -one. So, you know, you move your arm this far, the puppet moves its arm that far. However, you get to something as asymmetrical as a space bug, which has joints that are not only not spaced the same, but are actually facing opposite directions. When I say go, ready? One, two, Your puppeteering three, be gets compounded many times over because you can do the same thing you normally do with this arm, but with this one you go like this, and then you have to do that. And so try to move everything at the same time and keep those proportional movements under control is really challenging. Okay, ready, and guy, reach. Okay, pull the arm back. And turn. Oh, yeah. can we do that move again? And please keep that, please keep that left hand working constantly. Yeah, the it, it went dead when it was right in the middle of the frame. Don't stop. Okay, action. Okay, ready. It was fantastic to watch. It was some of the most exciting, some of the most moving stuff that we did. I thought it was, you know, I was just fixed to the floor sometimes, with, you know, missing limbs, watching some of this, but watching these, this creature stumbling around, you know, it's, it's, it was the most extravagant and beautiful puppet show I'd seen some of the time. I, knowing these guys were under the floor and in their break going to, you know, paste dirty pictures to my leg in, in, in the time between were up there moving these things around and it, it was it was it was interesting how how moving it was how how much that worked and and how much you, know, you cared I, I remember being in a in a play once uh, actually when I went to do the the um, sad sequel to this uh, but I I was doing a play in New York uh, and uh, and we were rehearsing the play and, and the director choreographed this scene. He blocked this scene at the end of the play and if, just in the rehearsal hall everybody was in tears and uh, we couldn't, you, you, it had nothing to do with what had happened before. It had nothing to do with the characters really. It was just an extraordinary moment of a, of a director using actors as puppets to create a, a visual that was terrifically moving. And, uh, and that's what that's what this was. It was, you know, the combination of, of David and Chris creating this moment of this mechanical figure in, uh, in this set that had just been destroyed by the fly character over that time. 
stumbling back and forth between these these two pods. Just uh, it was it was quite beautiful. <laughs> So, whenever you see the full, complete figure sort of freestanding, it's what we call the lumberjack rig, which was a, uh, a sort of a seesaw, uh, a little dolly with a post in the center and a big long beam with lots of cables going to a puppet at one end and a big guy, John Berg, strapped to the other end and pushing it along with a bunch of other people with hand controllers going like this to make things work. Uh, it was probably the most versatile rig, but also... Um, one of the most time-consuming because there was a lot going on. on the, I mean, obviously, the more stuff you've got going on, the more people involved with the puppet, the more time it takes to coordinate them all. Over. Just about at five. That's it. Wow. That's easy. 